Church family, welcome everyone. It's great to see you. We're excited to worship with you guys. Come on in and grab a seat. Say a quick hello to someone. Give them a high five, give them a hug, give them both. We're just getting ready to worship. Before we start worship, um, I'm just gonna read out uh, some scripture I was reading this morning just to prepare our hearts to get ready to um, encounter the Lord. This is uh, Psalm chapter eight, verse one to five. It says, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You set your glory above the heavens. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and that the son of man you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. Father, it is so incredible, your majesty, your vastness, your grandness, your sovereignty. And yet you, you are so real to us and you're, you have crowned us and you have placed us in a place of relationship, in a place of, of even authority, it says, over the earth. So God, would you come and encounter us? Would you come and show us your majesty? Show us your sovereignty, your grandness.
Can we just lift up our voices, lift up and shout, he's so worthy. We praise you, Jesus. We exalt you, O oh God. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you. Our hearts 
singing out church let her rise let her rise worship the lord this morning pour out your praise upon him him who is worthy him who is worthy pour it out every other name we magnify and we glorify your name oh Jesus there is truly no one like you truly no one truly no one like you oh God so worthy so beautiful Jesus we magnify your name
God, more than anything, you are the one. A while ago, um, God gave me this word in worship. Um, he said the word breakthrough to me, and my natural thought was, oh, you know, a personal, like inward, emotional kind of breakthrough. Uh, and I had no sooner thought that and God said, no, what if I broke through into the room? And I realized immediately, oh, I'm, I'm just sitting here in worship, uh, completely consumed by my own struggles and my own challenges. I'm, I'm just inward focused. I'm, you know, making this all about me. I'm not making it about Jesus at all. And I, I actually can't see Jesus right now because I'm only looking at my problems. Um, and in that moment, I just realized, wow, man, if, if Jesus broke into this room right now, that would change everything. That would put everything in my life into perspective. Yeah, I would still have some issues and problems. I would still need some personal breakthroughs at the right time, but that would change everything to have Jesus break into the room. And it's, it's not that Jesus isn't here now, it's not that we're not experiencing Him or connecting with Him, but um, let, let's shift our eyes and let's focus on Jesus breaking into this room in a sovereign and powerful way, more than what we've ever known. Bigger than all of our past experiences, bigger than all of our our challenges, our, our struggles. Let's not make it about us, about our agenda, as good as it may be. So let's take a couple minutes, let's worship a bit more, and let's cry out to God. Let's repent for where we've made our problems and our issues bigger than Him. Let's hunger, let's ask God to come break through into this room, to show Himself to us in a way that is beyond our comprehension, that blows our minds, that puts everything else into perspective. So Jesus, we, we cry out to You. We ask You to break in. We want more of You, Jesus. We want Your perspective. We want you to be the king of our lives, the king of our hearts, not our own agendas or our self-consumption and our problems, but you, Jesus, would you break in? So let's worship, let's cry out to him, let's ask him to break in.
Father, we exalt you, we glorify you. Father, we respond. We respond to you. We, we enthrone your name and we lift, we lift to shout and we lift our sounds and our praises this morning because you deserve it all, Father. You deserve it all, Jesus. You deserve it all. Father, would you come? Like James was saying, would you come and break into this room? Would you come and break into the areas of our lives? that we feel, we, we don't feel like we have an energy or we feel like we don't have a fight. Would you come right now and break every wall down? Would you come and break any sickness, any disease, any things that we're fighting in our body? Would you come and break it off right now in the name of Jesus? Father, would you come and break it off? Any challenges we're having in relationships, in our families, in our marriages, with our kids, with our, with our siblings, would you come and break it off right now? Would you walk into the room, Father? Would you walk into the room? Would you walk in the room in our schools, in our jobs, everything that we're facing? Would you walk in the room, Father? Would you walk in the room? Would you walk in the room and change it all? Would you walk in the room and change it all? Jesus, we call up your name and we say, Jesus, 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 just spend a moment just saying his name, Jesus, 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 as you say his name, he's just inundating you with his love, with his grace, with his presence, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, your name be exalted in this place. Jesus, your name be exalted in our lives. Jesus. Jesus, we exalt you. We exalt you, Father. In this, in this moment, we exalt you. Father, your word says, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, but it is with your mouth that you confess and you're saved. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Father, this moment right now, we want to confess with our mouth that you are Jesus, our Savior and Lord of our lives. If you want to put your hand in your heart and repeat this prayer after me and say, Father, would you come, enter my life, would you come and be the Lord and Savior of my life. I want to walk the rest of my life with you. Would you come in? If you're in this room and you feel like the Holy Spirit is speaking to you to commit your life to Jesus and you feel this pull towards God that you've never felt before or maybe you never made a move before to confess with your mouth that He's the Lord and Savior. I want to give this moment for you to come and meet our team here at the front. If you feel like you wanna commit your life or maybe recommit your life to Jesus, would you come forward? We wanna pray with you. We wanna walk this journey with you. We wanna bless you. We wanna be a support to you. But if you're in your seats right now, yeah, come on, Father, we thank you. If you're in your seats right now, if there's anyone else, 
that you feel like, oh, you know, I've been to church over and over again, but committing my life to Jesus is another step that I've never actually done. I would, if you're here in this place, I want to invite you to come forward. Yes, Father, we thank you. Yeah, we thank you. Yeah. I feel like there's someone else. Someone else there here and you're just sitting there. Jesus is calling you to no longer be an ex spectator, but he's calling you to come and be a part of his family. Yeah, come on forward. We thank you, Jesus. Come on. Yeah, come on. Can we just give it a shout? Yeah. Maybe put your hand in your heart and say, Jesus, we're so happy that you're here. Just welcome his presence for just another minute. Just another minute. Yeah. We welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you, Jesus. Turn to the person next to you and say, may the Father bless you. May his presence overwhelm you. May his love and grace be upon you today and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, team. You guys have done amazing. Thank you for leading us into worship. Turn to the other side. Say, hey, it's a pleasure to worship with you. You guys may find your seat. Say hi to someone that may be new and is next to you and you don't know them. We're so thankful that you're here, that you've chosen to, to be with us today. Anyone here for the first time at a Catch the Fire Church? Just do a quick wave. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to call you to do it. Oh, come on. Yes. Thank you. It's awesome to have you here. We're so excited to, to get to know you. If you want to come and meet us at the welcome desk at the back, our team will be more than welcome to tell you how to connect, how to belong, how to participate in everything that we, you do. But we're so excited that we are here on a Sunday morning. Anyone had one hour? Less of sleep today? Yeah? I am so happy because today all of you are in the same boat as me. So I'm happy that you guys got to taste at least for one time. But this is James. James is part of the School of Ministry. And tell me, where are the students today, James? Well, usually they're over here. But this yeah. is... Yeah, give us a shout. Um, this is the uh, students' first official Sunday. Um, the school started on Monday, um, so they've just gone through a week of hearing God's voice teaching. Give us another shout, school ministry. <laughs> welcome them, guys. If you see them around, introduce yourself. Um, welcome them. Buy them a coffee if you feel led. Um, they're, they're great people. They're from all over the world. We've got lots, especially from France and Switzerland, this school. Yeah, come on. We love that, you know, the next generation come and be a part of what we're doing here on the every day and every week of our church. So we're excited to have those guys. We are also so excited that men's and women's ministry started back up here at the church. So twice a month, say twice a month. Those two groups are meeting here on the Wednesday night. Maybe if you don't know uh, how to connect or where to connect with people, this is a good place for you to start. And there is a, a woman's breakfast coming up, which is exciting. We have a, a special speaker and Lillian, the team has done a brilliant job. So if you are and want to connect with, with the woman's ministry, come to our table at the back. We want to tell you all about it. And, um, you know, eating together is also always a good place, right? To meet God over food. Maybe we should, uh, no, 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 we should. Okay, uh, Transformation Weekend. How many of you guys have done Transformation Weekend? Yeah, come on. We have four of those and we, we, we run those, um, you know, all over the year. And uh, we, we want to encourage you to do them. We want to encourage you to sign up and be a part of our journey courses because we want to see you grow in your walk with God. We, are, are, uh, we love to see every church member engaging in what we do as a church. And we want you to, you know, um, join in and be a part of the courses. In the first meeting, there were only three spots left. But the spots have been multiplied. 
So there are more spots available if you want to be a part of it. We want to encourage you to do so. It's coming up in the next uh, uh, week or so. So if you go to the back and they are full, sign up to the next one. Because we want to see you guys coming alive in your walk with God. Amen? Amen. Awesome. Another thing is, James, you've been a Connect Group leader for how long? Uh, three, four, four years, I think. Tell me, tell me, why should I join a Connect Group? Uh, you want to join a Connect Group uh, to experience great, meaningful friendship, community, and get challenged in your walk with God. Come on. Um, me and my wife have uh, led a Connect Group since the fall of 2018. I'm not sure how that's four years. Yeah, about no. Five, I don't know, years, man. five years. Five years ago. It's too early to do math right now. And um, we we really enjoy it. Um, even as leaders, it adds such richness to our lives um, and to our friends, our the relationships we have um, with the people in our connect group. Um, and we just love doing life with them, being connected with them, uh, journeying through their challenges, their highs, their lows, um, and bringing God into their lives and. Um, yeah, and stretching ourselves. Um, yeah, we, we love it. We um, wouldn't trade anything for it. Yeah, come on. These guys, you know, James and Natalie, she's sitting here at the front, have been absolutely jet legends as small group leaders, connect leaders, if I can say it that way. But we have more connect leaders here in our church. Now, here's the thing. I want to join James and Natalie's connect group, but it's full. Right? And these guys are amazing and they've done so well that I'm like, man, if only one of them would go away and I can join in and jump in. But better than that, instead of sending people away, you can help us build the church by being a connect group leader. And maybe you're sitting there and you're like, no, I don't know, I've never led anything, I don't like it or anything, or maybe I'm not capable of. Do you know, I believe that we are all and we all have something uh, in us that we can give away. And I actually believe that each one of us were created with a purpose and Jesus himself has called us to make disciples. So who you are is exactly who God wants to use to make an impact in our community. So what I want to pray right now is that God will speak to you and maybe, you know, you're not ready to lead and there's a journey to go through it, but maybe you have a home and you want to make a space for other groups to meet at your house. But I want to ask God to speak to you today because I believe that we can all be a part of building the church. Amen? I want more of James and Natalie's group all over the church. I want people to walk in and be, you know, oh my goodness, there's so many we can choose from. And to see um, that church doesn't stop here on a Sunday, but it continues during the week in our homes. Amen? All right, close your eyes really quick. Holy Spirit, would you come and speak to us? I bless our church to be a church that is involved. I bless our church to be every member to be a church. Every member to, to have a house where the Holy Spirit comes and speaks and ministers to our church. To be a community of fire, uh, embers of fire all over the city. But Holy Spirit, I ask that you will come and speak to each one of us. And if this is a good moment... For me to start a connect group, would you come and speak to me today in the name of Jesus? Amen. Turn to the person next to you and say, hey, I think God spoke to you. <laughs> James, who's speaking today um, we have Steve for Long. a service? Steve Long speaking this come morning. Come on, can we put our hands together guys, for welcome Steve? Steve. Thank you, guys. Steve is a new member of our ambassador team. Is that correct, Steve? Well, remember with a no. slight bow. <laughs> <laughs> um, former pastor. For, okay, former pastor. Um, yeah. Cher, can you tell us what you're speaking on this morning? I am talking about belonging, and we're in a series looking at the book of Ephesians. And so if you want to turn your phone Bible or your paper Bible to Ephesians 2, we're going to look at 11 to 12. Sorry, 11 to 22 this morning. Wonderful. Belonging. Wonderful. We're very excited. Um, Steve is, as you nearly all know, um, has been with us for many, many years, and he's an excellent, excellent speaker. Um, that's, I was only four years old. <laughs> Anyways, um, he's an excellent speaker. Thank We're you. very excited to uh, hear him speak. So let's pray really quick. 
Holy Spirit, would you prepare um, our hearts? Would you set out your word before us? And would you give us eyes and ears to hear what you're saying and what you're doing? Would you just fill Steve? Would you flow through him? Give him God thoughts. Give him lots of insight and revelation. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, James. Very, very good. Good morning, church. Everyone's good? Excellent. I uh, woke up two or three times last night, and uh, each time as I was trying to get back to sleep, I felt the Holy Spirit say, we need to have a little ministry time this morning about the pandemic. Uh, three years ago yesterday is when the World Health Organization declared over the nations, the world, that there was a pandemic, a global pandemic. pandemic. Never been declared ever before a worldwide pandemic. And that just set the whole world into uh, a whole bunch of spins, some of them very negative. Uh, some people, actually this last three years has been positive for you. And you've had uh, God thoughts come to you, you've upgraded your skills, you've taken university courses, you've changed your career. Uh, this disruption has actually been good for you. And there's people like James and his wife that moved out of the city, bought a house, and just sort of started country living and things like that. So for some people, this has been a really good, I shouldn't say really good, but it's been a, a positive three years and God's been leading you. But then there's others that that's not been the case. During the break, I was texting one of the guys in our church and he's not doing well today. Texted me to say that he's thinking of giving up on everything. And I know he's watching because I told him to watch. <laughs> and he said he was watching. And I just felt the Holy Spirit say, we need to break off some stuff today from the last three years. And especially those of you that have had traumatic experiences, health issues, like Sandra and I have struggled breathing for three years. Uh, coughing, just feeling congested in our lungs. We're not completely clean of whatever's in the atmosphere. And probably some of you are like that. Your immune system's compromised. Then there's the, the disruption. Some of you lost your jobs. You chose not to be vaccinated and there was consequences for that choice and you stuck to what you felt the Holy Spirit telling you to do and you had consequences and they were financial consequences. And some of you lost your job. Some of you were put on, on sabbatical, you were put on CERB and that was good and bad. And I just like us to have a house cleaning time together. Would that be all right? So if you had negative experiences, financial, health, relational, maybe family members that passed away, could I get you to be just brave this morning and stand up because we want to pray for you. So if that's you, just stand up. Those of you at home, stand up as well. And those of you that are seated, if someone is standing nearby you, how about you just get out of your chair and just say, can I put my hand on your back? and just agree with the person that's, that's there. So just move around. Church, if you would like, if you stood and you would like someone to minister to you, just put your hand up and just wave and that'll draw someone over to you so that they'll come and minister to you. Yeah. Folks, I'm gonna pray three prayers. I'm gonna pray body, soul, spirit prayers. So first of all, Father, we're asking that you would come and every single place where the effects of COVID and other diseases have come. And because people's physical bodies have, their immune system has been down, they've not been able to be at full strength, that other sicknesses, other diseases have come our way. And in the name of Jesus, we're saying, okay, three years has come and gone. This is year four, we're starting clean. We're starting healthy. And in the name of Jesus, we declare that over you, that your immune system be strong. That's for everyone in the room, but especially those of you standing, that your body recovers, your body bounces back from this declaration that was said over the world. In one sense, it was a factual thing that when the World Health Organization makes those kind of statements, but it's also a negative thing because they're making a worldwide statement of negative. And so, Father, we break that word off of us. We break the word off of all of the, uh, every night for like two years, First thing in the news, how many people have COVID? How many people are in hospital? How many people died? And Father, we just say all of that stuff that just came our way and our physical bodies paid a price. 
we say no more and we say health in the name of Jesus. Our bodies get strong, our bodies, are, our, our lungs especially, are, are healthy, functioning in Jesus' name. And then the area of your, of your soul, your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions. And all of the, the baggage that came of fights. And I know some of you, your, your, your family was divided on all sorts of political issues, all sorts of the medical statements that were being made. And there was just battles even in your own home with your family members, with extended relatives. And so Father, we're saying where all of our emotions got messed up, stirred up in a negative way, where we began to have negative thoughts against government leaders, against medical people, whatever the, the, whatever the issues were, Father, we're saying cleanse us, cleanse our soul, our mind, how we think, our emotions, how we feel, and our will, how we make decisions. And friends, I wanna remind you, the best passage about this, Romans chapter 12, verse two, is that as we present ourselves, this is verse one, to the Lord again, we need to ask the Lord to renew our thinking so that we can make godly choices. And Father, if we've been corrupted in any way, it's like, it's like there's not just a physical virus, but there's an emotional virus, there's a mental viruses that came, mindsets that messed us up. And when we have wrong thinking, we make wrong choices. And so daddy, we, we ask that you would come and cleanse us in our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions right now. And especially for those of you that have had mental health challenges, like this young man that was texting me uh, today, just bombarded by, by thoughts of, uh, that are negative. I can't keep going, I have no hope. And if you've, if you've been living any of the last three years with no hope, we speak that spark of God into your spirit right now, into your, into your thoughts, into your emotions, into your will, that God is with you. And if he's with you, no one can be against you. And we bless the spirit of God to wrap his arms around you, to give you big Father God hugs, and to say, you're gonna make it, you're gonna be there. And we speak hope into every person's spirit right now in Jesus' name. And Father, everywhere where the demonic was rampant, everywhere where trauma began to come, and phys people's physical bodies, their, their mindsets, every part of us has, has uh, had potential of trauma coming and stealing joy, stealing hope, stealing life. And in the name of Jesus, we break off trauma over every single person that's in this room, that's watching right now. And we say, life, 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 life comes to you. Those of you that are ministering to someone, just say it in their ear, life, 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 life. Every, everything that you need from God, that he would come. And whenever, where there has been demonic interference, where there's been fish hooks in you, and you know that you're being pulled in ways that you don't want to be pulled, you know that it's just something's got you. Father, we say, pull those fish hooks out right now. Separate us, spirit, soul, and body from all the demonic as it was related to COVID. Spirit of God, come. I'd like everyone to stand with me because we need a good drink of the Holy Spirit. We need to be refreshed. So Holy Spirit, would you come? Now just pause for a second here, people. Just begin to feel the Holy Spirit. If this is new for you, get ready. <laughs> You're supposed to feel God. You're supposed to experience God. Every significant Bible story that we have in our scriptures, Old Testament, New Testament, people who loved God felt God. They knew him, not just in their head, they knew him emotionally, they knew him in their spirit. And so we say, Holy Spirit, come and refresh us. All of us wash off everything from this pandemic. It's year four, we're starting new. I find it interesting that it's a Sunday which is the first day of stepping into what would be the fourth year. And we say, Daddy, we need to be refreshed in our physical bodies, our emotions, our thinking. Our spirit needs to be clean from every contamination, all the demonic. And we say, Spirit of God, build us up, strengthen us right now. Strengthen us right now. 
If you're close enough to someone to put your hand on their shoulder, just go ahead and do that. And say the word more over them. Okay, now everyone just take a... No talking now, just be on the receiving end. Spirit of God, come. Fill us up. Fill us up. Come and tangibly hang out with us. At the end of several of the, the books that Paul writes, he, he finishes basically saying things like this, may the love of the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Fellowship is a fancy word for best friends hanging out, having coffee, just being together, enjoying each other's company. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us as a group right here, right now. Those of you at home know the closeness of God. Thank you, Father. Come. Come and be with us right here, right now. In Jesus' name. Okay, smile at the person who put their hand on you. Say thank you. I felt that. <laughs> Good. I see some of you giving a hug. Great. You may be seated, church. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. We're going to read that in just a moment. So we're in a series for the, this month and next month looking at, we're just going to go through, look about uh, 8, 9, 10 verses at a time. And today's topic is belonging. And the church in Ephesus is started by Paul on one of the missionary journeys. It's a, uh, a pagan city. And when he goes there, he uh, as in every city that he went to, finds believers, finds people that are open to God, begins a church. And the scriptures, as we look at the book of Acts and we look at some of the other passages, we realize that as the church uh, grows, Paul, Paul needs to go and start another church. And so he sends one of his young protégés, a Greek guy by the name of Timothy. And Timothy, we don't know how old he is, but when Paul writes to Timothy, he basically says, Timothy, don't worry that you're young. Uh, you got it. You've got the, the Holy Spirit with you. You're a leader. Just go for it. Well, friends, church history tells us that in a city of 100,000 people in modern day Turkey, this church got to 50,000 people. This church was the largest church in Bible, Bible time. It's the, it's the mover and shaker of culture. And so when Paul's writing to this church, he's not writing to a tiny little church that's just trying to hold on. He's writing to a church that has taken over a city and a region. And he's reminding them, and today uh, the passage we're going to look at is all about we're belonging. And most people in this church in Ephesus were not Jews, they were Gentiles. And so he's, he's writing to them and he's trying to encourage them, you belong. You don't have to be a Jew to be a follower of Jesus. There was a big debate about that. Uh, Acts chapter 15 talks about that debate. The thought was, the Jewish people thought, in order to be a follower of Jesus, Gentiles have to become Jewish first, and then you jump to being a follower of Jesus. And the whole debate was, no, let's just skip the Jewish part and go straight to Jesus. And so that was the debate, and the decision was made, no, you don't have to be Jewish. You just be who you are and follow Jesus. So let's read this together. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. Here's what Paul says. Don't forget that you Gentiles, a Gentile is someone who's not Jewish. That's most of us in the room. My dad's mom was Jewish, and that's as good as it gets. I love eating hummus, though. Just in Israel, oh my goodness, people, you need to go to Israel just for the food. Just, just saying, forget about touring around and seeing where Jesus was. Just go for, the, <laughs> go for the food, or just go to North York, and I got some good restaurants in North York. Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. We didn't belong. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision, even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days, you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel. You did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. That's us. But, say the word but. But now you have been united with Christ Jesus. That's the word belonging. Say the word belonging. belonging. Yep, now it's belonging. 
Once you were far away from God, but now you've been brought near to him through the blood of Jesus. For Christ himself has, has bought peace for us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from two groups. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross and our hostility towards each other was put to death. He brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him and peace to the Jews who were near. Now, all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. Say the word belonging. belonging. Yeah. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together we are his house built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets and the cornerstone is Jesus Christ himself. We are carefully joined together in him becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are now being made part of his dwelling where God lives by his spirit. Amen. So three things, friends. Number one is that uh, we're united with Christ because of what Christ did. Jesus was the one who had the idea that we need to, be need to belong. And Jesus understood that for us as Gentiles to belong, we had, someone had to do something about the sin problem. I'll come to that in just a moment. A couple years ago, uh, maybe just before the pandemic, I got invited to speak at my dentist. All my dentists have been Jewish. Uh, my dentist, uh, Norman's his name. He may be watching. Hi, Norman. Uh, Norman would schedule an extra half an hour for Sandra and I to visit him in the dental chair. And he, we would have conversations because he loved having conversations with Sandra and I when he found out there were pastors that we hear from God. And those are all interesting concepts for him. And anyways, long story short, he asked me would I come and speak at his synagogue. Happy to do that. He said, uh, the rabbi's going to need to talk to you first just to make sure that you, you, know, you do everything all right. And it's like, happy, happy for that. So I'm on the phone with the rabbi of the synagogue in North York. And uh, anyways, we're having a nice little chat. I'm waiting for the question. I know what the question is. He says, are you going to be proselytizing people? Are you going to try to get our church family to become followers of Jesus? I said, absolutely. <laughs> um, well, why would you want to do that? It's because, and I said, because I think that I'm right. I, th I think that everyone needs to have a relationship with Jesus to, to know God. And he was a little, like, he was not expecting that. I did tell him, I'm not going to actively do that in your meeting. I'm going to be polite and follow your rules. But uh, I do believe that every single person, Jew or Gentile, needs to have a relationship with Jesus because of our sin. He came back with a really good response that I hadn't thought about. And he said, well, we don't teach like that in our synagogues because being Jewish, we know that we're already in God's family. And it was like, huh, well, that's quite interesting. He's, he's already feeling belonging. Still hasn't dealt with the sin issue, but I love that, that in our city are rabbis that believe that they're part of God's family. Uh, from what I read in the scriptures, everybody needs to have a decision, uh, a choice to follow Jesus, which is what Jonathan led us in uh, at the beginning of this meeting. So the issue for every single person in, in mankind, Jew, Gentile, doesn't matter what your cultural background is, is every single person has sin, and that's what separates us from God. And Jesus, knowing that, he made the choice to pay the penalty that I have, which is a death sentence over my life. Yeah, And Jesus went to a cross and he died. And the Bible says that anyone who believes in him will have everlasting life. And so I made that choice when I was eight. We had 32 people a couple weeks ago in Israel and we had a wonderful time. And one of the places that we went to is called the Garden Tomb. 
And it's uh, this place that is, they don't know for sure, but they think it's the garden of Joseph of Arimathea who loaned his tomb to Jesus. And I don't know if he realized he was loaning it to Jesus. Um, he may have thinking he was giving it to him. Uh, it turned out to be a loan. Anyways, it's, it's probably about 50 meters, maybe 70 meters away from a cliff. So let's say that the arc back here is we're standing here and there's this rock face uh, just outside of this garden area. And on there is this, you can see, you can imagine a skull. And they have photos of what it used to look like 40, 50 years ago, where there's two eye sockets and there used to be like a nose which has sort of fallen off. And in the Bible, it says that Jesus was crucified at a place called the skull. And we're, it's right there. At the bottom of the skull is a bus station. <laughs> it's like, it's a little letdown that there's, there's no church there. It's a bus station. Anyways, uh, fascinating that we're there. And all of the Bible story just seems to say that this could be these two places that he's crucified here and he's buried here. But friends, guess what? We went into the tomb that's there. Jesus wasn't there. There's no body there. And this is the amazing thing, friends. Jesus made a way so that every single person can belong to God's family. Number two, real quick, is now we have access to the Father through the Holy Spirit. Jewish people all over the world love God, but they don't call him Father. Muslims around the world have 99 names for God, but Father isn't one of them. And our world is searching, if there's a God, is he relatable? Is God someone that I can get to know? And the answer is a big yes. And most of you in this room, you've had uh, many, many encounters of knowing God close, personal, that he loves you, that he's with you, that he's for you. We have dreams, we have times where we're, we're physically experiencing the love of God. I've told you some of my stories. Even uh, when we were in Israel, having experiences, it was a little shocking um, when you get to the Western Wall where the Jews pray, they have this big wall, you can put prayers in there. They divide the men from the women, have a big wall down there. And the guys were up to the wall. <coughs> there wasn't a lot of people there that day at the wall. And as soon as I put my hand on the wall, and most of the men had the very same experience. As soon as we put our hand there, it was like, like God was there physically. And I don't know why the Jews, when they pray, go like this, but sooner, somewhere, someone, as they were praying, God came on them and they, and everyone just copied because that looks good. I think that's, that's how it went. It's like, well, they're having an encounter. They did, okay, I'm gonna do that too. And so they, they do that, yeah. We can have access to God as a loving father because of what Jesus has done for us. Last point, we're family with believers all around the world, Jews, Gentiles, doesn't matter what your culture, doesn't matter what your language, we all get to be one amazing family of God. How many of you went to a function at Rogers Center 15 years ago called the Heaven's Rehearsal? Put your hand up. Was that an awesome thing? If you missed it, friends, uh, Reynolds and Kathy Maines, who used to be on 100 Huntley Street, uh, Reynolds, the oldest son of David Maines, who pioneered that TV show, they had a God thought a number of years ago, which was to, for Christians in Toronto to practice going to heaven. And so they hired, they mortgaged their own house, God bless them, mortgaged their house to pay for the rental of Rogers Center. And there was maybe 25,000 people, if I recall, that uh, showed up. And it was fascinating because just like in the Bible, where it says people were singing and worshiping from every tongue, every tribe, it was one of the most multicultural church services I've ever been in. It was celebrating the diversity of Toronto. And nobody had their name mentioned. No one. The band, no clue who they are. Were they from one church? Were they from several churches? No clue, didn't say. Nobody who got up to read scripture, there was no subtitle that said pastor or apostle or prophet, nothing. Everybody was just anonymous. And they had dance teams from Filipino churches and from Korean churches and French and Spanish. It was awesome. It was one of the best 
things that I ever went to, I cried for five minutes before the first song was over. Sorry, I cried five times in the first song. It was just very impactful. We took Sanders' brother and his wife, and they're crying, they're sobbing all the way through. They've never been a part of anything like that ever before. Friends, that's what heaven's going to be. And you know why I love our church? We're practicing every Sunday for heaven. All one big family. Doesn't matter your culture, doesn't matter your language, doesn't matter your age, doesn't matter your gender. Here's one of the most dramatic things that Paul the Apostle said. His, the very first book that he wrote was the book of Galatians. And he said this, no more is there men and women, Jew, Gentile, slave, or free. In Jesus, we're all one. Dramatic. If you go to Israel today, like we were just there, we were in the uh, ultra-Orthodox section, there is a big division between men's rights and women's rights. Go to Muslim nations around the world, big division between men and women and their rights. Slavery, still around the world, Toronto, lots of sex slaves, sadly. Lots of negative things. But as soon as you become a follower of Jesus, we're in God's family. We're called children of God. Sons and daughters. Guess what? We belong because of Jesus. We have a place. We have a hope. We have a destiny. And here is Paul's writing to this amazing big church, mostly Gentiles, He's saying, Jesus did it all for you. Let's celebrate Jesus. Let's love Jesus. He paid the way. He opened the door for us to have a relationship with, with, with uh, Father God as Father. He welcomed the Holy Spirit. As he left this earth, the Holy Spirit came and was, is now with every single one of us. And Jesus did it all for us. That's good news, is it not? Here's what I'd like you to do. We're going to stand. We're going to pray. Going to welcome the Holy Spirit again. I said in the first meeting, I just had a little thought, so I'm going to say it again. Do you know men that are slightly balding? Where are the men that are slightly balding? <laughs> Praise God. Okay, so here's my theory of why men are slightly balding. When we pray, many of us were told, bow your head, close your eyes. And when we do that, the glory of God from heaven burns, <laughs> burns the hair. And... Ladies, when they pray, they're going like this and they got glory over their face. Uh, that's, that's how Jesus prayed, wasn't it? His head up, looking to his daddy. So do that, please. Get, get a suntan this morning from the Lord. I'd like you, as your face is towards your daddy in heaven, tell Jesus three things that he did well for you. Just talk out loud. Jesus, thank you for saving me. Thank you for introducing the Holy Spirit. Thank you for leading me to have a relationship with Father God, your daddy, your Abba. Thank you for healing my body. Thank you for watching over me. Thank you for giving me directions when I'm not sure if the GPS is right or not and I should go this way or this way. Thank you for leading me to my wife. Thank you for my kids. Thank you. Just say it, friends. What are you thankful that Jesus has done for you? And say this one, thank you that I belong. I'm your child. I'm a son. I'm a daughter, depending on if you're a guy or a girl. Thank you that you're with us. Jesus, thank you that you made a way. All I need to do is say, I give up. I can't do it by myself. Would you come into my life? Be with me forever. Be with me forever. Live with me. And the Bible says that Jesus, just before he ascended and went to heaven to be with the Father, he talked to his followers and he said, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit and he's going to be better than me. And the reason Jesus said the Holy Spirit's better is because he's in us. Jesus wasn't in us. He was physically walking around in Judea and Galilee. But the Spirit of God is with everybody who chooses Jesus. Wherever we are, God's with us. We belong. We're in Christ. He's in us. 
The Father's in us. The Spirit's in us. The triune God is in us, with us, for us. We can't lose. And so, Daddy, we, we just say thank you again today. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for his blood that drained out of his body, hit the ground, and life came. We thank you, Father. Friends, just stay standing. I'm going to ask our uh, Rob's team that talked to people about Jesus. As I've been talking about this, maybe you're going, okay, maybe I don't know Jesus the way that you're talking, Steve. And I know we already invited people to come to the front and just have a conversation with some of our team that are able to do that. So Rob, do you mind just having your team over here? And those of you on the prayer ministry team, if you don't mind beginning to come up to the front and standing up, up here as well. If you're here and uh, all of a sudden, a little bit more revelations come, more understanding of what Jesus did for you. And you're saying, okay, I think I, I got it clearer now. And I'd like to have a chat. I'd like someone to pray with me about knowing Jesus far better. In just a moment when we dismiss, we're going to get you to go to the far side over here. And the team over there, Pastor Rob, uh, is leading that team over there. And prayer team is up at the front, happy to pray with you for whatever it is that you would like prayer. And uh, James is going to come and dismiss us in just a moment. But friends, we have an amazing God, do we not? We have a big brother named Jesus. He said that you and I are co-heirs with him. What's an heir? What's an heir? Someone who's going to get something that they shouldn't be getting. A co-heir is someone who's going to be named in a will. And usually that's good. Yes? To be named in a will. And Jesus said that about you and me that we are co-heirs with him of all the good things that God has for us. Just put your hand out one more time. Holy Spirit, I'd like some good stuff today, please. If I could have a little bit of my inheritance right now, I'd like that. So what is it that you think that you need this week? Do you need patience this week? That comes because you're a co-heir. Do you need a little bit extra cash this week? That comes because you're a co-heir. Do you need a little bit more anointing this week because you know you're going to be having conversations and you need to be led by the Spirit? Just ask the Lord. I need this this week. I need you to be with me this week, to help me this week. I want to represent you really well this week. I need you to help me with my anger issues. I need you to dial down my impatience. He's the giver of every good gift. He's the father of lights. Shines on us. Never holds back because we're co-heirs. Say this with me. I belong. Part of the family of God. Brothers and sisters all around me here today. Brothers and sisters all over Toronto all over Canada, all around the world. Friends, there's estimated to be like a billion and a half people who love Jesus. Born again people love Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us today. All right. Uh, James is going to... Should we get people to... Oh, I'll get you to dismiss, and then we'll have people uh, come to the front. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, James. Um, Be seated for 30 seconds. Yeah, the... Just a quick reminder, um, if you haven't signed up for the Transformation Weekend, there is some extra bonus spots available. Um, if you want to connect and this is your first time attending, you can do so um, back there through that glass wall. Um, and if you want prayer for anything, yep. feel free to come up. Come on up. Um, as soon as we're done here, the ministry team is here. Yep. And you're going to lead us and, in a... And connect with Jesus, these uh, people right over here. Yep. Good. That was it. That's everything. I think you need to say a goodbye prayer. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Holy Spirit, we thank you for everything you've done. And we thank you for Steve's message and um, how you spoke through him. And um, we're just delighted to come and encounter you. Would you just let everything um, just take root in our hearts this week? Would you make us conscious and mindful of uh, where you are and what you're doing? Amen.
We'll see you guys back here next week. Right. If you'd like prayer up to the front, you want to have a conversation about connecting with Jesus, right over here.